Unit 35, questions 106 to 108. So this is about Graham's Law of Diffusion. And basically, Graham's Law of Diffusion is saying that bigger uh, molecules um, diffuse more slowly than small molecules. So bigger molecules, of course, have some inertia. You know, it's more difficult to get them to move. And, uh, and the exact relationship is an inverse square root law. Um, and that's uh, um, Graham's Law of Diffusion. So, a question, first question. As the densities of neon and krypton at standard temperature and pressure are blah and blah, uh, respectively, then the rate of diffusion of neon is about um, whatever. So, we see that, um, you know, the, the easy way to do this is, is for you to notice that um, the difference between the densities of neon and krypton going from 0 0.9 um, uh, to uh, krypton, which is 3.74. So you can see that it's, it's about uh, four times. Okay, so that means that uh, the density of neon, uh, neon's density is um, one quarter uh, the density of krypton. So neon's density is one quarter uh, the uh, density of uh, krypton. So if you notice that, and if you notice that this is an uh, inverse square law, so it's always uh, the reverse. You have this in the in the thing, and it's inverse, I'm not square, sorry, inverse square root law. So it's the square root of this. Square root of four is two. And then it's the opposite, okay, because it's inverse is the relationship as it's been given to us then uh, neon will have twice the diffusion of krypton. So that's the uh, easy way to do it. Uh, you can always write that the rate for neon, um, the rate for neon is going to be uh, proportional to one over the square root, okay, of one quarter uh, krypton. And so taking the square root of that, you're gonna get uh, one half uh, here, and then one half in the denominator. When you have the denominator in the denominator, it becomes a numerator, so it ends up getting uh, two times uh, krypton. So this ends up being two times um, the amount for krypton. So either way, uh, 106, the answer is C. 107 uh, talks about effusion, and effusion is passing a gas through a fine hole. And um, the rates of effusion and diffusion are the same. Um, so, uh, 107. Two gases, X and Y, have densities, dx and dy, respectively, both measured at same temperature. Each gas is placed in turn into an apparatus. And uh, if the time taken to release a certain volume of gas, X, is Tx, and the time taken to release the same volume of gas, Y, is Ty, then the ratio of Tx to Ty. <clears throat> well, yeah, that's um, uh, uh, quite straightforward because you know if you have if you have the rate um, of effusion or diffusion of is is inversely proportional. I'm not going to write it just yet, but the rate of a gas is inversely proportional. Um, to the molecular mass, okay, or the density, um, as as it uh, may be. Actually, one of the one of the uh, laws is that of molecular mass, and that's um, that's part of the uh, rule. But in this particular passage, they're talking about density. So the rate is inversely proportional to density. What that means is that you can write that rate of one over the rate of another uh, gas is equal to the density of uh, one, uh, uh, this gas, over the density of uh, that gas. So the rate is um, this. But a rate is something per minute, right? So the rate is something per minute. So the time is the opposite of the rate. So the time would be, time would be t2 over T1, which is the opposite of the rate, because the rate is the inverse of 
of the time. It is per time. So tx over ty, oh, and, and of course this is square root. So, and this is also square root. I don't have to put it on the one, I could have just kept it on the d either way. Um, but tx over ty is therefore uh, equal to um, uh, the square root of dx over dy, where this is the density of compound x or the density of compound y. And of course, you often, um, when, often when there are multiple questions in a passage, if Acer gets you to uh, derive a particular type of equation, then the next question, uh, they're asking you to use that equation that you just came up with. So um, at a certain uh, temperature and pressure, 50 mils of a gas whose molecular formula is unknown um, took 250 seconds to pass through a small hole. Under precisely the same conditions, 50 mils of argon took 100 seconds to um, pass through a small hole. If the atomic mass of uh, argon is 40, then the molar mass of the unknown gas is? Well, here we get to use uh, this equation, but we don't have to use density at all. We can use uh, molecular mass instead of density, and uh, we would get the same uh, um, uh, question. Because this is about the weight of the compound and how it is able to uh, diffuse or effuse. And so, um, so we will use uh, the time of... Uh, um, time of x over time of y. So we have 100 over uh, 250 uh, is the seconds, is the time that's uh, been taken, and that's going to be equal to the square root of the molecular masses. So this uh, square root, uh, it was argon that took 100 uh, seconds. It was argon that took 100 seconds, so it, this is where we put argon's molecular mass, which is 40, and uh, the other one is uh, the molecular mass we don't know. So 100 over 200, and 50, um, uh, 100 over 250 is the same thing as saying uh, 200 uh, over 500. And that's, of course, the same thing as just saying 2 over 5. So we have 2 over 5 is equal to, um, to this uh, root 40 over m. So we'll just square um, both sides. And if we square both sides, we're going to end up, um, I guess I'll just uh, write it over here. We're going to end up with um, 4 over 25, um, if this is squared, 4 over 25, and, um, and that's equal to 40 over m. So now I can uh, cross multiply, and uh, by cross multiplying, bringing m over here, I have m over there, and then I'm going to bring 25 on to the other side. 4 comes down here. So I'll have 40, and I'll have 4 underneath. Then I can uh, cross out the 4s, then I have 10. Then it just equals uh, 250. So the molar mass of the unknown gas is 250, so 108 is D.